everyone, this is Vanessa. Welcome to Collide Center Ministry Online. This is Wednesday Night Live. We hope that you have had a great week and we are excited that you are joining us. First, we would like to let you know that we are giving away a free DoorDash order at the end of broadcast. In order to enter, you need to like and comment before the video ends. We will announce the winner in the comment section at the end of broadcast, so stay tuned and good luck. All the information you need is emailed out in our newsletter each week, so check it out and let us know if you need help getting in. Thank you all for joining us. We are glad you are here. Remember to like and comment for a chance to win the prize and share this video to help others see it. All right, everybody, we are going to get started with our question generator, also known as a questionator. So we're going to roll some random questions that pop up up on the screen, and we would love for you to engage in the comments, tell us what you think, write your answers, enjoy each other's company. We're so glad all of you are here. Don't forget, like the video, comment throughout the video, and you have a chance to win our weekly DoorDash prize. So let's jump into our first question. Okay, first question, what irrational fear do you have? Wow, great question, an irrational fear. I've got several, if I'm really honest, there's a couple of them. So tell us in the comment section and you guys, you know, be, be honest, be open. Everybody has irrational fears. So if you can't think of one, maybe if you read a couple other people's, you might be inspired and be like, yeah, that kind of freaks me out too. So one of mine is if I'm coming up the stairs and then the lights are off behind me, like I am, I am a grown man, but I am sprinting up the stairs because I'm not gonna wait around and see what's behind me or look over my shoulder or anything. I'm gonna sprint up the stairs, especially if I'm leaving the basement. Let's try another question. I love this question. All right, you guys, listen, this is not a prideful thing. This is just loving yourself and appreciating the way that God made you. What is the best thing about you? So this is not bragging on yourself. This is just being like, I am happy that, that I'm here. And, and you know what? This is a nice thing about me. So what do you got? You can share one or two or three if you want. We just love to um, get to know each other a little bit more and see what you think. So what's the best thing about you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say that one of the best things about me is that I love to talk to new people and get to know people and tell stories. And I just think that generally I'm friendly. I know you guys have lots of amazing things, so don't be afraid. All right, thank you guys for jumping into our questionator. Now let's jump into a couple other games. All right, this is a new game called the team building game. And all of you are gonna get a chance to build your own team. So today your mission is to build a team that can save the world. So just make sure you, you keep that in the back of your mind. I'm building a team that can save the world. And every page, there's gonna be multiple people or characters on the page. And you have to pick one person from each page to make an ultimate team to get the job done. So you guys will get it. Here we go, write your answers in the comment. I'm gonna to wait to give you all of my answers at the end and give you guys some space to think and look at each other's answers. Very first one. Pick one Avenger to join your team. Lots of Avengers, lots of different skills and abilities and talents and personalities. Pick one Avenger to join your team. Make sure if you can, uh, maybe if you don't remember anybody's name, you could say the green one, that's fine. Um, but you could get a good look at them. Pick one person to join your team. Write your answer in the comment section and let's see what you get for your first team member. All right, on to our next page. You have to pick one member of the Bikini Bottom SpongeBob SquarePants character crew. So one of these people or things, or I don't even know what they all are. You have to pick one SpongeBob character to join your team. So you've got one Avenger on your team. Now you're adding one SpongeBob character to your team. Look at your options, think it over, use the force, be smart, be wise. Who's gonna join your team to save the world?
All right, our third page. We've got four animals on the screen. So pick one of these four animals. <laughs> one of these four animals to join your team, save the world. Oh my goodness, you've got a honey badger, a panda, a chimpanzee, and a kangaroo. I love all four of these. Each of them have something unique and incredible about them that may or may not be helpful. But I think that probably all four of these animals would beat me in a fight easily. So I could not physically dominate any of these animals. Um, I could probably outrun a panda bear. That's probably about it. So anyway, write your answers in the comment section. Who would you pick? And make sure you're keeping track of your team. You've got three team members you would be number four. So right now you're adding your, your fourth team member, including you. And on to our last page, the team building game. This is your, your fifth member you are adding to your team, which you are one of the five. So you're gonna add one of these mascot characters to your team. You've got 10 options on the screen, a lot of different options. And um, yeah, so a lot going on here with these mascots. Some of them are terrifying. Some of them are soft. Some of them are huge, strong, made of Kool-Aid. Um, so lots of different options. Pick your character to join your team. Go ahead and lock it in, write it in the comments. Who are you gonna pick? One of these mascots to join your squad. All right, you all. So you plus the four people you got is your team of five. You're gonna fight evil, save the world. Go ahead and comment your total roster. Who are your your yourself and four people who are together gonna save the world? And you can you know compare each other's uh, teams. I can go ahead and tell you, looking through these teams again, that I have. I've got Iron Man, and then I've got. I'm going with Karen, the computer. Right, I think that's a good connection with Karen and Iron Man. Then I'm going Honey Badger, because Honey Badgers are fearless and brave and pretty scary. And then I think I'm gonna go with the Kool-Aid Man, because he runs through walls. Like you need a wild card. You need somebody crazy on your team. So basically me, Tony Stark, Karen the computer, a Honey Badger and the Kool-Aid Man are gonna save the world. And I believe your teams could do it too. Thank you guys for playing. Hope you enjoyed that. to the water with my basket be swept away in the current of your mercy and I know I'll never be the same there's no limit to your promise Jesus you have done it all for me Jesus you have done it all for me Jesus, you have done it all for me. Jesus, you have done it all for me.
Hey everybody, welcome again to Clyde Student Ministry Online. We hope you've enjoyed the games and activity and music so far. This is our message time. It is our fourth and final message from this series called Difference Maker. We're at the end of another month, right? We were almost done with February 2021. I don't know about you guys, but I can't believe we're already approaching March. Like we just started this new year, we already got two months done and we're on to the next one. We're really excited and can't wait to tell you more about what's gonna be going on in the spring at the Church of Severn Run and Clyde Student Ministry, but we'll get, we'll get to that later, all right? Tonight we're gonna wrap up this message and I wanna start with kind of bridging something we did earlier tonight. We talked about our, like our top choices, like building our team, um, building the team of like, you know, maybe how to save the world or get something done or find treasure. But here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite movie or TV team? Like it could be one or two people. It could be like a whole group of people like the Avengers or the X-Men or the Justice League or I'm, I'm, I'm missing a bunch. I mean, there's like television classics like 
the Scooby-Doo gang? What is it? Tell us in the comment section. We'd love to hear it and see each other's answers. What is your favorite TV or movie team? Now, I wanna know what's your favorite sports team? Just in general, what's your, your maybe if you wanna say it like this, like I have, if, if you don't maybe follow professional sports, maybe it's a college sport, maybe it's a local high school sports team, it could be anything. Tell us in the comment section who your favorite sports team is. Mine will probably always be, uh, like in history will be the 90 to 98 Chicago Bulls. This is my number one favorite team of all time. Um, and then just in general right now, like football is probably my favorite sport and I am a Chicago Bears fan. So my favorite team's not that great. And I know that and I'm, I'm gonna be okay. But one day you guys, one day I'm gonna be on here with a Bears Super Bowl shirt. Um, I might be 90 years old, but it's gonna happen one day, I believe it. So tell us your favorite sports team in the comment section. Maybe you might be surprised. You might have some similar things in common with other people. I also, one more time, happy birthday to everybody. I feel like there were so many February birthdays. So happy birthday to all you February people. You're, you're awesome, and we hope you had a wonderful birthday. Okay, now let's kind of transition this into our message. Again, this is week four, message four of our series, Difference Maker, and we have been following this thread. From the very beginning, God has a purpose and plan for your life. And we can look at, at the story we find in the Bible that you and I, at various points, many different times in our life, we chose to disobey God. We chose to bring trouble, trouble upon ourselves and into our hearts and mind. So we're in this world, this life full of trouble. But for God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to come and to rescue us and save us from our trouble. So while we live in a world full of trouble, you and I are invited to peace and hope and love. We are invited to be filled with who Jesus is and what he's done for us, to, to find the courage and the faith and the peace, and to go out into the world now on a mission to make a difference. Because what is inside of us is different than the trouble that's all around the world that we live in. So we've talked about how we can be a difference maker, and, and Jonathan was here a couple weeks ago talking about being a difference maker. Last week we talked about being faithful, available, and teachable, being F-A-T. Fat, I, I, we're still rolling with that for now. Maybe we'll change it later. Sorry for the acronym, but faithful, available, teachable. Uh, you can catch that message last week. So here we are, week four. We're, we're, we're leaning in, right? We're, we're believing big that God has a plan and a purpose for our life. That because what Jesus did, the faith that we have in him, our hope and our life is forever changed. We are out of the trouble and, and God's now inviting us to go and Jonathan shared the Great Commission to go to everywhere, to everyone, to tell them about Jesus, to baptize them, to make disciples, and, and to, to expand the team we live on and the team we live with. And that's where we kind of wrap up tonight. Just this important, amazing truth. The difference makers are not alone. Difference makers do not go through life alone. They don't walk through faith alone. They don't go on the mission to tell the world and make disciples alone. You and I are connected together. Everyone who believes and follows Jesus is connected together. It's a kind of an amazing thing to think about that for, for centuries, people have followed Jesus. And for centuries, people before in the Old Testament followed the faith that one day Jesus would come. So for all of history and all of time, for all of eternity, there has been the focus and the following, either looking forward or now for us kind of looking at Jesus since he's, he's come on one person, on one mission. So there's this common thread. It's like we're wearing the same jersey or we have the same logo on our uniform or, or whatever it is that connects all of us. It's, it's Jesus, whatever illustration you, you like the most. Um, we're all connected together. Now you guys know, and we can just be honest about this, we live in a world full of trouble, right? Like but that's kind of going back to all of us individually. We have trouble, we live in trouble. Jesus came to save us individually from our trouble. The team, the, the, the idea of being in a family, of being connected to other people is impacted by the trouble of this world, 
right? I mean, you guys think of some examples with me. What is it that keeps people from connecting and being a team, being a family, working together, right? There's a lot. There's a lot of different things you can look at in our world and see the brokenness of different, uh, well, of racism, the, the brokenness of because we are not all the same, there's this pride and evil, I'm better than someone else and someone's not as good as I am, right? We're too different. We're too different to be on the same team. We're too different to be a part of the same family. That's, that's a, a part the trouble cre creeping in and, and telling us a lie. Uh, maybe it's the, we don't think the same and act the same. We don't like the same stuff. So there's just people with different personalities that I just don't like or I don't really get along with, right? So there's different ways that trouble creeps in and, and creeps in and, and we feel this kind of tension that what's supposed to bring us together, there's still a division. So we look at this truth and we challenge ourselves with that we are called as difference makers to do this together. So let's just, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at big picture, but let's kind of bring it in home a little bit closer, right? Let, let's look at some scripture verses and then let's just talk about the church that's ever run, Collide Student Ministry, and, and those of us who are here, a part of this community, to, to lean in, how can we better be a team, be a family, be united in this mission, because we are better together. You and I are better in community than we are all by ourselves. We are better with a team than we are playing all by ourselves. You know, the reality is we're, we're not playing uh, if, you're, if you want to go with basketball, like we're not playing one on one. We're in a world full of trouble. Like the other team is stacked. So if you want to go one on five on the basketball court, that's not the best way to do it. That's not the way that God invited us to do this. He's, he's inviting us to be a part of a team. If you want to play football and you want to go one versus 11, that's a really hard way to play football. Don't do that. Like get, get a team, build a team, find a family, and grow your hearts together for this mission. If you wanna talk about the movies, if you wanna be a Avenger all by yourself, good luck defeating Thanos and saving the world, right? It's really hard to be a difference maker if you're gonna be all by yourself, you know, like the lone soldier uh, on an island, disconnected from everybody else. We were meant to be together to support, encourage, and stand by each other as we all follow Jesus. So let's look at these scripture verses together, starting in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3 verse 12 says, Since God chose you to be the holy people that he loves, you must clothe yourself with a tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. And remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So let the message about Christ and all of his richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Yes, we could spend an entire month and really the rest of our lives digging into these passages and learning more and more about this invitation and opportunity to be a difference maker to have the, the peace and hope and love of Jesus in me, to make a difference in the world full of trouble, but to do it with others, to do it as a team, to do it as a family. God is calling us here, and we see in Colossians 3, 12 to 17, um, to, to live in harmony with each other. While we are a difference maker, fighting and, and, and you know, delivering hope to the world, we're fighting against the trouble, we're not called to fight our other brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not called to, to be against the people who are on the same mission, trying to make the same difference we are. Now we are called here to tender-hearted mercy towards each other. Wow, tender-hearted mercy, I mean, what do, you, what do you think that means? What do you think it looks like to have tender-hearted mercy? To have kindness and humility, gentleness and patience for each other. 
You know, verse 13, this is the NLT translation, says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. One of the big troubles of our world is just the disunity and the brokenness, right? We, we talk about racism, but we also can look at politics, just the how quickly I'm offended by somebody else who's different, um, who thinks different and, and has different ideas than I do. We can look at um, even just guys, I mean, look, look around, we can talk about different schools, it is funny now with this last year having been virtual, but I know when I moved here about a year ago, right before COVID started, and just talking to some of you all, it was like, oh yeah, well this school, something, something, something about that school. Oh, that school, something, 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 something about that school. And everybody at that school is something, something, something. Like, I, I heard that from some of us, right? So we were kind of leaning into some of this disunity and and being offended and being upset by somebody else where we have this clear tender-hearted mercy kindness patience make allowance for other people's faults oh so and so they said something to me two years ago or now so and so talks to my ex-boyfriend from four years ago and and you guys i mean just honestly we're, some of us are still sitting here like oh yeah if they ever came around here like they're gonna hear about it and you know, we, we kind of let that trouble and that anxiety and that brokenness that's in the world around us, sometimes we bring that in to our church and our, our, our youth ministry. We take it into our, our mission and we let it kind of disrupt everything where God is telling us, nope, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together. How are we going to be a difference maker in a team, in a family? Everything's got to be bound together tied neatly with a bow with love so that we can get this message, the rich message of Jesus out into the world. Now we have again this picture here. It's a team effort. It's a body, literally, and you kind of think of like, I've got hands, I've got feet, I've got ears and eyes and nose and mouth and, and, and whatever, right? We can do head, shoulders, knees and toes and, and go way old school. But the point is each of us have a role to play. Each of us has a, a, an important part of this. We're an important part of the body of Christ. You are an important part. So if you take yourself out, if you're going to go all on your own and do it all by yourself, the rest of us, we are missing you. And if you're going to be the person who is going to say to themselves, well, I'm more important than everybody else. In fact, I don't think we need ears. So let's just kick ears out. Ears, you're no longer a part of this team. Ears, you're no longer a part of this family. See you later. And then you're like, I'm missing my ears. I can't hear anything. Uh, you guys get that? Like I can either be on the side of removing myself because I just want to be alone and I feel more comfortable being alone. Or we're on the side of the judgment, thinking too highly of yourself to tell another valuable part of the body of Christ, a part of our team, just to say, no, you know what? I don't need this teammate. This teammate's not as important as I am. So see you later. We're going to go down a man. So we're going to play basketball four on five. That is never the best way to be a difference maker. It is certainly not the picture that God gives us of a healthy, happy team, family, loving unity of the body of Christ, the church that we are a part of. Last passage, really quick, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. And let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some of us do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Yes, this is a very clear and compelling invitation. Don't give up on being together as a church. Don't give up on being together as a student ministry. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, I've got stuff going on. Yeah, I've got other other opportunities, but this is what God has called me to be a part of. When I follow Jesus and he invites me to be a difference maker, and remember we said following Jesus will lead you to making a difference. Following Jesus will lead you to be a part of a team, to be a part of the family, to be a member of the church. Right? That's just the way God has set us up. It's the way he's created us. We have many members of one body. We have many members of one church and one student ministry. So don't give up on it. Don't give up on, on your, your neighbors, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And here's just where we're going to wrap this all up. We will be better together. We will make a bigger and, and more lasting difference when we can learn to follow the love and light of Jesus with 
the people that are around us, not just by ourselves, but to do this together. That we can trust God, we can motivate each other, we can invite each other, and each of you are invited to, to consider five people, five people in 2021 that I want to see come to make a faith uh, decision to follow Jesus. As we live and learn as a family, our mission is to grow. Right? We want to find more people to make our, our family and our team stronger and bigger. So there's more people that we need to get the way that God has uniquely built them and bring them in and get these people and God has given them unique talents and abilities that can change the world and bring them in and hold them tight and love them well. So at the church at Severn Run, we are not going to just be the same we've always ever been. I mean, just the way you and I continue to grow, right? You guys are not done growing. Your body is here, but as you guys get older, I mean, a lot of you are going to continue to get taller. You're going to continue to get stronger and smarter and wiser. Our, our church body, our student ministry, will grow and become all of those things when we reach more people and lovingly bring them in, invite them in and support them, encourage them to do this together, to be a part of a team, to be a part of a family. And I hope you know how much we love the opportunity to be with you that we're praying for you, we're cheering for you, and we cannot wait for what the future holds for the Church at Severn Run, for Collide Student Ministry, and for all the opportunities we're gonna have to grow and love and learn together. God has called us to follow after Jesus, and following Jesus will lead us to change the world around us, to be a difference maker. So let's do this together, let's encourage one another, and as the Bible said, let's take this opportunity to pray and worship together. We love you all. We hope to see you again next week, same time, for our new kickoff of our next series for March 2021. Until then, have a great night.
Thanks again for hanging out with us tonight. We hope you all had a wonderful time and know that we are praying for you. We're thankful for you all and we can't wait to see you very soon. We hope that you take an opportunity this week to connect with somebody, to be a difference maker in someone's life by showing the love of Jesus to them. It could be a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a classmate, anybody that God puts into your path is you follow Jesus, God will lead you to be a difference maker. So we believe in you. We're cheering for you. Don't forget, we've got opportunities coming up for baptism. We've got opportunities coming up for worship workshops. If you want to practice and get to your skills with music or tech or lights or sound or video, anything like that, you can find the link to sign up in the uh, well, it's in our weekly newsletter and it's also in our Instagram bio. Make sure you all follow us on Instagram. We are on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Obviously, you guys know that. And then don't forget as well, we're kicking off a new month, a new subscription box, and a new series in March. So make sure you're signed up for our subscription box. Make sure you invite a friend to get subscribed as well. Check the comments for our weekly winner for our DoorDash prize. And we hope to see you all again next week, 7 o'clock, online or in person here at the church. Have a great week.